of 30 runners for one of the spectacles of the week. And all set, final handler moves away. And they're off and racing. And from the stalls in the centre, Blenheim Boy, one of the first to show. Jimi Hendrix over on the far side with Mr McCann also showing pace. Amor Tenti, a power of beauty over there in company at this stage with Lawful Command, who's not too far away. The grey is Amor Tenti attracting the leaders. Over on the far side, the spotted cap of Malik's and Great Max are also well to the fore. A Herbert's reign in midfield with Thesis. And over on the far side, the noseband of My Little Tip. The greater runners over on the far side. Blenheim Boy, Yonifis, the Royal Runner Sagas over there in company with one niece. On the near side, there's just four of them. Tranquil Night Harrow, Bolt Hole and Spin Around. So by far the bigger group over on the far side and they have the lead early on. Out in the lead is Malik's disputing it with Jimi Hendrix. Great Max right behind them with Mr McCann, Power of Beauty tracks the leaders. Barley not too far away. Lawful Command just ahead of Fiat McHugh, Amor Tentia and then on the right hand side of that group who put 50 in you who's giving a lead into King of Time. Two of the leading fancies on the right hand side of the far side group who still are ahead of Tranquil Night, Spin Around, Harrow who's making some ground as the groups come together as they race with two and a half furlongs to go. Jimi Hendrix has taken over from Power of Beauty, Barley, Lawful Command and Amortentia over on the far side. Great Max are coming into it. Koi Koi, Thesis travels okay. On the near side, Blenheim Boy and also King who put 50 in you trying to get on terms. Lawful Command still leads with Jimi Hendrix behind these Power of Beauty. Thesis over on the far side. Who put 50 in you? Juanis is also making good ground. They hit the furlong pole. Thesis on the far side. Jimi Hendrix, Saga for Her Majesty. The Queen is making ground. Who put 50 and you as well, out in the lead, Thesis, Saga coming hard on the run to the line, Thesis may have just held on from Saga, who's gone agonisingly close for Her Majesty, Jimi Hendrix, who put 50 and you, one knee, Snorful Command, Yonafis next across the line, Fiat McHugh behind these was Ribby, Koi Koi was next, Kitsuna Power, and they trail all the way back to My Little Tip. First impressions were that Saga's got close, but hasn't quite got close enough. And once again, Ryan Moore might have been the nemesis for Frankie Dottori ahead between them. Who put 50 in you may just get the ball for third place. That's very close, actually. Jimi Hendrix, possibly. Who put 50 in you? Then Lawful Command. If you want extra places, Juanice was across the line in sick with Koi Koi Fiat McHugh also giving you some hope there. But Thesis, who's been getting progressively closer, looks as if he has repelled Saga, who got going just a little bit too late. And there are the extended places. Juanice is sixth. If you get any extras, then Koi Koi is on the near side, possibly headed by Fiat McHugh for seventh place. The Britannia, I don't think it is in the balance. I think Thesis has just held on. Saga got close for Her Majesty. Maybe she can go one better in our next race. And do you remember three years ago, these colours, the Judmont colours, broke Frankie's heart by a metric that day. This there's Thesis. And Ryan Moore, Her Majesty the Queen, refers to as her jockey, as we saw in that feature earlier on with Ryan. He might not be quite so popular now. About to hit the front, Jason. Yeah, he goes and commits on the far side. You can see Frankie launching his challenge. Jimi Hendrix, who was trying to back up that Haydock victory. Who put 50 in you, the only one from this side, to make a challenge. But how bizarre for all the riders to edge over to that particular part of the track. They've completely shunned the high number draw. You've had no chance whatsoever if you were in that little small field who were trying to come up that part of the track. Confirmation thesis has won in the pink colours on the left there. Ryan Moore sticking his left hand. Here comes Frankie. Second from the right, Haley. Yeah, Ryan's horse has just sort of looked left slightly in towards Frankie, but it hasn't made any difference whatsoever. It is interesting because they've actually edged right up the straight rather than coming over to the left. Because Frankie was drawn 18, Ryan was drawn 10, and, and they, they're furthest across. Um, so, I mean, this is his horse's handicap debut, so that was an um, exciting one. See what happens next. Here is the winning rider once again, Ryan. Um, the way the race panned out, was that how you expected it to be with the majority of the field ever on your side? No. Um, but he, he's a very, very talented horse and we couldn't believe we got beat on him twice already this year. He's got beat three times in Maidens. Um, he needed a big field. He travelled beautifully and he quickened up well. And um, still, still a bit babyish in what he's doing, still learning. It's the first time he's won a race, so delighted that he's done today. Just looking at him, I mean, he's a gorgeous looking son of Kingman. He's a, very similar to his sire in many respects. But in your opinion, 
he's a long way away from the finished article, judged by the size of him as much as anything else. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it's mentally more than anything. He's he's still learning what he needs to do, and if we can get him a bit better, he will. Uh, he will, he will some more. Well done, Ryan. And it's the first Royal Ascot success for, for Harry Charlton in partnership with your father, Roger, and um, he's hung on well there in the end. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think Ryan would have liked to wait longer, but when you kind of, he edged to the side and he went and sent him in and it was, he looked like he was ahead, but um, actually at the end you see his head was up and Frankie's horse's head was down, so it was a little closer than, than you would like, but uh, no, it's great to get a win. Tell us about uh, the horse, what's he like as a character? Um, he's unbelievably talented. Um, we've been running in novices, he obviously was second to my Prospera at Newmark, uh, Newbury, and then we got beat in a kind of slowly run race at Lingfield. He tried to make all at Donny and got caught late. Just nothing's quite run as we would like, and uh, it was quite a bold call coming here from Jumpman. We could have ended up a sort of fifth race maiden with with a horse that we always thought was our best horse, and they said give it a go. And uh, Ryan, actually, to be fair to Ryan, he called up and said enter the horse. I want to ride it. So, okay, was, given the talent, clearly you think he has. What yeah. level do you think we we can reach with this horse? Well, I mean, obviously one off 90 today. Um, he, he's uh, you know he's heading on towards 100. Uh, I think he's a good horse. He's he's a, he's a, he was the biggest horse in the field. He's got a lot of so scope and size so hopefully you can progress from this and just finally for you i know you've grown up with your dad training many big race winners but how satisfying and proud are you today yeah uh, it's yeah awesome in the first year to win a rolaska race is cool well done mate thanks hey ed tactical later tactical later. and ryan will be riding for her majesty the queen later on tactical he can make amends perhaps in the the queen's eyes